please don't go Baby, please don't go Baby, please don't Refugee go Blues, Orleans, W.H. Orton, you know page 34 of the Edexcel Anthology. It would be helpful if you could print out the poem so that you can make notes on it. You should pause this video now and read the poem. When you restart the video, make sure you have some coloured pens ready so that you can make some notes. Pause the video regularly so that you have time to write down anything important. Babe, I'm way down here You know I'm way down here Babe, I'm way down here In a rolling fog, baby, please don't go This poem was written in 1939, just at the start of World War II. At this time, the Nazis were in power in Germany. The Nazis hated Jewish people and blamed them for all sorts of ridiculous things, including lo losing the First World War and Germany's money problems. The Nazis made life very difficult and even dangerous for Jewish people. They did this by preventing Jews from having jobs or running businesses. Jewish people were often imprisoned for no reason and were the victims of vicious attacks. Consequently, many Jewish people fled for their lives to other countries. Many came to Britain to look for safety. They sought refuge. Refuge means safety. This is where we get the word refugee. The poem is written in the voice of these refugees from Germany. Repeating the words, my dear, makes us think of a man talking to his wife. So let's look at the poem. The title is important because blues was a very popular form of music at the time, and Auden in particular loved blues. The poem is influenced by blues in a number of ways. Firstly, the rhythm of the poem is very similar to blues songs, and so is the rhyme scheme. We call each of the verses stanzas. The first two lines of each stanza rhymes, but the third line is always a kind of reply, and so does not rhyme. The third line is also constructed as a repeated phrase. The blues is a style of music that is often full of emotional intensity and critical of society. This poem is very similar. Now we need to look at the language of the poem. The poem starts by referring to the population of a city as 10 million souls. The word souls suggests that there is something valuable or holy about each of these people. It also implies that we're all the same, rich or poor, Christian or Jew, German or British. However, the next line suggests that in life people are treated very differently because some live in mansions, while others live in holes. So society is very unfair in the way it treats people. Of course, life would be very difficult for these refugees from Germany, and they feel that they don't belong anywhere, not even living in the holes with the poor people. The country that they once thought fair or beautiful could mean Germany, the home they have left behind. However, some people have suggested that it refers to Palestine, the spiritual home of the Jewish people. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that their home has been left far behind. This is shown by the comment that you can find it in the atlas. The third stanza is composed of a natural image that can be seen as typical of rural England. There is the old yew tree in the churchyard that blossoms every spring. This implies that the natural world is in a continual state of renewal. Life goes on. After winter there is spring. That there is always hope. This image of optimism in nature is a contrast to the world of men, where there seems to be no hope. These refugees have lost their passports and will never get them back. Of course, a person without a passport becomes a kind of non-citizen someone without a home. This idea is summed up in the next stanza, 
where the refugee situation is um, described by a state official or consul with the words, if you've got no passport, you're officially dead. This presents the state as very uncaring. It was true that refugees in Britain faced a very difficult time. In this photo, you can see some German refugees who have been arrested after arriving at an airport in London. The voice in the poem describes going to a committee this is probably a charity or an official office. The refugees are offered a chair. In other words, they are told to wait and then told to try again next year. Again, this presents the state as very uncaring. The reply in the third line of the stanza, where should we go, reminds us that as refugees, these people would not be allowed to, to get jobs or to take part in normal society. The next stanza describes a political meeting where pe British people are complaining about the refugees arriving in the country. At the time, many British people were angry that these foreign people were coming to the country. It is clear that the poet, Auden, thinks British people who hold these views are selfish. The phrase daily bread reminds us of the Christian Lord's Prayer. Auden is cleverly suggesting that these people who are against the refugees of behaving in a way that is unchristian. The poet uses an interesting metaphor in the next stanza. He compares the angry speeches made by Hitler to the thunder rumbling in the sky. The metaphor also reminds us of the bombing and aircraft that would soon dominate the skies of Europe during the war. The refugees describe seeing a poodle in a smart little jacket and a cat let into a house. Of course, they are all treated well because they are not German Jews. This stanza highlights the concern and care that people have for their pets, but they cannot give the same care to their fellow human beings. We see a similar example of animal imagery in the next stanzas. The refugee describes fish swimming freely and the birds singing in the trees. These simple analogies, an analogy is a kind of comparison, show a contrast between the free natural world and the human world of prejudice and oppression. The final two stanzas are kind of dreamlike and seem to become more weirdly po poetic. The refugee describes a great building, but once again there is a sense that they don't belong. In the last stanza, the dream continues with a description of a great snow-covered wasteland. A great number of soldiers are searching for Jewish people. What is so bizarre and disturbing about this is that this poem was written before the beginning of World War II. However, this is a fairly accurate prediction of what happened. Hitler's armies invaded Russia and in the process hunted down and executed millions of Jewish people. The falling snow is a kind of pathetic fallacy. This means that the weather reflects the mood of the poem. The snow reminds us of isolation and death. In conclusion, Refugee Blues is a powerful protest poem. It has a strong political message. That is that refugees needed respect and protection, that they are people just like us. It does not matter what religion they are or what language they speak. This poem is very relevant today because there are many refugees who still seek safety and protection in Britain, but still they have to cope with intolerance and uncaring attitudes. Baby, please don't go. Baby, please don't go back to New Orleans. You know it hurts me so. Babe, I'm way down here, you know I'm way down here, babe, I'm way down here in a rolling fog, baby, please don't go.